Okay, hi everyone and welcome to a brand new video concerning Python and Firebase. In a previous video, we tackled Python with Firebase authentication. So that's not in any way related to this video, but you can refer to that if you're interested for this other feature of Firebase. So in this video, we will tackle the cloud storage feature from Firebase and how to store documents on the cloud, how to download them, how to get their URLs and how to view them and all these different types of operations. So to get started, we are going to first create a Firebase project. So if you don't know how to do that, this is console.firebase.google.com. So you have to add a project and then you would create your project by giving it a name. So I'm just going to call it the storage demo. So this would be our project. So this doesn't really matter for you, but you can enable it anyways. So just go ahead and then you would create your project. Now, while the project is being created, um, to use, so, so this is PyCharm, this is an empty, brand new uh, project in PyCharm. These are some text files full of dummy text that we're going to look into in a minute. So this is the text files that I will be using to upload into the Firebase cloud. All right, so we have these text files. We'll go more over them in a minute. So brand new PyCharm. So Firebase, it's the Python wrapper for the Firebase API. So this is what you would use so you can interact with your Firebase database on the cloud within your Python programs or applications. So Firebase must be installed. So we go to the terminal and then we pip install Firebase. And once we do so, we, do so, we wait for Firebase to be installed. Now I already have it on my machine, so this isn't really a thing for me, but you wouldn't have this, you just have to wait a couple of minutes for Firebase to be installed. Now, going back to our Firebase console, so our new project is ready and it has been opened. So this is the project, this is the Firebase console, our project is storage demo, and we have access to all of Firebase's many features, such as authentication, database, storage, and others. So we're focusing on storage right now. So storage is important for us because it's important for any app developer, actually. So if you have an app or a startup and your app involves images or text files or audio clips or videos from people. So, so let's say you're a social media and you're sharing photos and everyone has photos on their profile. You have to store these photos somewhere on the cloud. So this is why Firebase comes in handy because it makes this process seemingly simpler. It's very good for early startups because you don't have to go ahead and buy storage space i mean you would have to pay for firebase as you expand but when you start this is a pretty solid option so without without further ado let's just get started so storage get started so these are the rules that we have now we're going to change them uh because of the following so i'll get into it in a minute so we just create the um storage and we wait all right, so our storage has been created. So this is what it looks like. So just like a brief overview of what it really is. So we're storing files on the cloud. So it's like saying that you have um, some sort of, I don't wanna say Google Drive on the cloud for your application, but it's kind of similar to that. So you have the cloud and you're storing things there and you can access them, you can upload others, and that's pretty much how things are done. Now, an important thing to do before we get started is to edit the rules. So the rules are pretty specific at first if we didn't change them. So it allows read and write to the storage only if the auth, the auth is not null, meaning this is only okay if someone is signed in. So we want to change that because we're not actually going to do any authentication in this video. So we just set it to if true and we publish our changes. All right, so now we can um, read and write to the storage without any problems. Going back to Python. So we said we downloaded Pyrebase. So let's just create a new file. So um, a new file. All right, so let's call it uh, storage demo.py. All right, so we have this new file now and we want to get started. So the first step we want to do is that we want to actually connect to this Firebase remote database and connect to the storage specifically. So we import Firebase like we said we would because that's why we installed it. And then we must configure Firebase. So 
So let's call this Firebase config. And I'll get to what that is in a moment. So before you can do anything, you have to connect to the specific application. So if we go back to our project overview, we say we want to add an app. So you have iOS, Android, or a web app. So for Python desktop apps, you have to add a web app. So let's say storage demo. We register the app, and then we get the information for us to be able to configure our app according to this database. So this is what we need, this Firebase config right here. So we take these and we have to just paste them here within the curly braces. Now here's an issue with Python specifically that Python will not allow these not to be strings. So you will have to turn all of these fields, these key value pairs, you have to turn everything into a string. So I'm just going to take a minute to do that. All right, so now that this is syntactically correct with respect to Python, we can move on. So we have our Firebase config and it can, it's a dictionary. Basically, it contains all the different keys and information that we need to connect to this application. So the next thing we want to do is that we want to initialize an app. So let's just say Firebase equals Firebase dot initialize app and we give it the Firebase configuration info. All right, so now we have a sort of connection to Firebase. We have an app. We have initialized our app. Now we care about storage. So let's say setting up storage. Now the source code on GitHub will be more thoroughly commented. So you'll have comments explaining everything. So if there's anything you missed in this video, you can refer to the source code, which will be linked down below. So anyways, storage equal Firebase dot storage. It's pretty straightforward. All right, so now we've connected to the storage. Everything is okay. Now we can actually run this and just to make sure everything is fine. We have no errors. Everything's okay, so everything's okay. Okay, so now we want to upload a file to storage. So I have these three text documents here, so I'm just gonna browse through them. So the first one is the standard Latin dummy text that we usually use for websites. And the second one is a part of a poem by Shakespeare, so it's just a text file. And the third one is actually the story from Google's website, so it's the history of Google. So anyways, we can choose either one of these to be inserted into our storage. So here's what we're going to do. So we're going to say file equals to input. Enter the name of, of the file you want to upload to storage. So now we're prompting the user to enter the name. So it's either going to be lorimipsum.txt or shakespeare.txt or storyofgoogle.txt. So it's going to be one of these files. Or it could be a file from a different directory, but they would have to specify the path. Okay, so let's say cloud file name. So to differentiate, this is the file name on our local machine. This is the file we want to upload. And cloud file name will be the name of the file on the cloud in the storage. So what are we going to call it there? So we can change the name and we can give it a specific path as well. So we say enter the name for the file in storage. All right. And the only thing we have to do after that is that we have to storage dot child. And then we give it cloud file name dot put file. Now, so I'm going to explain every single one of these, but let's first run it. So after we run it, now we can actually specify what file we want to upload to storage. So I'm going to start with the shake uh, spear one txt. Okay, and then I have to enter the name for the file in storage. So one second, let's go back to the storage and understand the thing. So this is right now empty. However, we can divide these into different folders and within the folders have subfolders and other subfolders and store files as well. So I'm going. that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to create a subfolder. So I'm going to say books slash shakes.txt. So I'm going to store this shakespeare.txt into a, a folder called books and it will be named as shakes. So let's enter and see what we get. So the process is finished. Now we can go back to our storage and refresh. You can also not refresh. Sometimes it um, doesn't actually do it on its own. So let's just do it in all cases. 
So after refreshing, we now have a folder here and that folder is books. So this is pretty clear. You have books now, you go to books and there it is. There's shake.txt and it exists remotely on the cloud right now. You can even access it in your web browser by opening it right here through the link. And this is what the poem is. So this is how it exists on the cloud. You can see the location. It has a token and it has a specific URL to it. So that's it pretty much existing on the cloud. Now, for this URL, how can I get this URL through my program? So here's what I can do. I can add an extra line of code here. So it's get URL and I want to get the URL of what I just uploaded. So I can just print it and say storage dot child cloud file name dot get no I'm I have accidentally added these already dot get URL all right so this is how I'm going to get the URL and then I can print it okay so we run it and now this time I want to upload lorem ipsum txt and this time i'm not going to put it within a subfolder like i did with the shakespeare one i'm just going to put it into the storage so i'm just gonna say dummy text so that's what i choose to call it dot txt and if i enter all right this is the url that i have for um i can copy it if i paste it right here and there it is. That's the exact same text file that we had. So let's just check our storage. If we, you can see right here that dummy text just appeared and it's outside the books subfolder. So that's pretty much how you upload stuff into your storage. Now these text files can be replaced with pretty much anything your application requires. So images, uh, other types of files, documents, videos, whatever you want. So that's pretty much how it's done. Now, you want to do something else if you want to download it. So let's say you want to download this um, A file. That's not necessarily these. So let's just um, remove these for now. I can put them back later. So, all right. So we want to download a specific uh, file. So let's get an input. So um, download link equals to input enter download url so this is specific to storage now what what we're gonna do here is that we're just gonna ask it to storage.child and we're gonna put the download link here and then we just dot download and now we just name it so this is what the name will be on our local pc so what we're gonna name it is um downloaded.txt all right so now we can run it Enter download URL. So let's say uh, books shakes.txt. All right. And now a new file appears here and it's downloaded.txt and it has the shakes uh, poem. So just to go over things, just to make things a bit more clear. So what this storage.child thing is, is that the child is sort of a child of the major storage uh, pointer. So the child is essentially any URL within that storage. So it can be, um, so let's just visualize it here. So if I go to books, so it's now storage demo slash books. Like if you edit it, it's slash books. All right. So this is how folders and subfolders work. So you need the child part here and you give the path in the cloud to that child function. And that's how you actually access these files. Now download, in this case, downloaded the file that we needed. And when, what we were doing before, we did so. So let's just go back. All right. So what we did here is that instead of using download, we used put. And we were putting the file name from the local machine into that child area in the storage. So that's pretty much how it works. Now, just a bonus, sort of. So we know how to upload, know how to download. There really isn't much to it. A bonus is how to read from a file. So I'm just going to... Um, ask again so let's let's just read from a file now the thing with reading from a file is that it's a bit different so it's not simply about downloading it we don't want to download the file itself as a file onto our machine we just want to read the text within it 
So to do so, it's simply combining two different Python things together. So let's say path is input um, enter the path in storage of the file you want to read. And then you go ahead and then you print storage dot child path. So now we have it. All right, dot get URL. Now, what does this give you? This gives you the URL. So instead of printing it, let's actually store this in a variable. So we'll call it a URL. All right. Now, how do we usually, if you're familiar with basic Python, you know, you can read any text, any file from the web, such as XML or JSON or HTML through URL lib. So this is what we're going to do. We're just going to say f is equal to URL lib dot your uh, dot request dot url open and then we open url dot read and now we print f all right so we just have to import url lib and that's pretty much it so if you know this from before this is how you read any file from the internet and the only thing we're doing here is replacing the url with the url that we got from storage so we have to first put the none in the get URL. So get URL takes one argument and that's none. So apologies for that. Let's run it. So books slash shakes dot txt. And I get the URL first and then there we go. It just printed the poem that it read from this URL. So that's pretty much it for this video. So thank you very much for watching. You pretty much know now how to handle your way through Python storage. So please leave a like and leave a comment if you enjoyed it and stay tuned for the next video. Hopefully I can cover more concerning Python with Firebase. Thank you very much. Also the source code is on GitHub.